Hello, Lauren. This story is called Gustav the Goldfish. The man who sold Gustav the Goldfish to us had warned us take care when you feed this small cuss. Just feed him a spot if you feed him a lot. Then something might happen. It's hard to say what. That's what the man said, so I tried to take care. Just to feed Gus a pinch, but it never seemed fair. Because he always looked sad when he gulped down the stuff. His eyes seemed to tell me, this isn't enough. Then he'd always blow bubbles as much as to say, come on, don't be stingy, I'm hungry today. Gus had to have food, not a spot, but a lot. No matter what happened, I didn't care what. So finally one day, poor old Gus looked so thin, I took the whole box and I dumped it all in. But the second I did it, I saw I'd done wrong. That fish food, I guess, must be terribly strong. He grew twice as big, Gus, the second Gus ate it. He grew twice as long. He grew twice as thick, and he grew twice as wide. Too big for this fishbowl, his tail was sticking outside. He was bursting the glass. He was big as a trout. I grabbed for the rose bowl. I yanked the rose out. My mother's best bowl, but I spilled Gustav into it. But what was the use? Because the very next minute, Gustav was bigger, as big as a shad. And he looked through the glass, and he looked mighty mad. And he splashed, and he thrashed, and he burped, and he blew. As much as to tell you, I blame this on you. This is your fault, because you fed me a lot. Get me out of here quick. Get me out of this spot. To the back of the house, to the kitchen, I ran. I needed more water. I filled up a pan. I poured Gustav in it as fast as I could. But he kept right on growing. It did him no good. I poured him from the pot to pot after pot. But the faster I poured him, the bigger he got. Then I ran out of pots, for Gustav still grew. Oh, it's awful what that one fish food can do. Water, more water, he'll die in the air. I raced from the kitchen up the hall stair. Upstairs to the bathroom, oh, what a climb. Cause the fish in my arms grew and grew all the time. Each step he kept groaning and rolling his eyes. When I got to the top, he was halibut size. He was almost too big for a fella to lug. But I got to the bathtub and put in the plug. And I turned on the cold water faucet full blast. Gustav, I panted, panted. You're safe now at last. Gustav, I panted. This tub ought to do. It holds my whole family. It ought to hold you. But it didn't hold Gustav. He kept right on growing. As soon the whole bathtub was full and overflowing. And my parents, I knew, would be very upset, because the water was making the bathroom quite wet. It was up to my ankles, my knees past my waist. And I saw Father shaving for his toothbrush and paste, bobbing around in this ocean. But what could I do? Because Gustav, my goldfish, still grew, and he grew. He was big as a dolphin, a porpoise, a seal. Oh, why did I ever feel Gustav that meal? Just because I was careless and fed him a lot, I would drown in this bathroom, likely as not. Then bang, with a crash and a terrible roar, and a splintering smash, we burst right through the door. And Gustav and I shot down out into the halls, and back down the, down the stairs, like Niagara Falls. The first thing I knew, we were down in the cellar, and Gustav, my fish, was a gigantic feller. Too wild and too dangerous to handle alone. I needed some help, so I rushed to the phone. A quick dialed and quick dialed the number of Mr. Van Bus, the man who had sold Gustav the goldfish to us. Come over, please, mister. He's as big as a whale. He's banging the furnace to bits with his tail. I knew, sighed the man, this would happen one day, and he hung up the phone and he came right away. With a lot of strange bottles, 
rucked into his vest, and a thing on his back like a medicine chest. He took it down the cellar and worked under water, and gushed off for more than an hour and a quarter. What he did, I don't know, but he must have been wise, cause he shrank Gustav back to his regular size. And he said as he handed the fish back to me, it was mighty hard work, boy. But this time it's for free. If it happens again, I shall charge a big fee. So next time take care. And he stalked through the door. Since then I have fed Gustav so much and no more. Since then I have not fed him more than a spot. Because something might happen. And now I know what. That's the end. Goodbye, Lauren. I love you. Bye-bye.